I'm Keith Russell with this special dedicated to what was a wonderful week at the AT&T Byron Nelson. Held for the second straight year at TPC Craig Ranch in McKinney. But before we get to some of the key components that made the tournament possible, for those who are new to DFW, who was Byron Nelson? We start with a quick history lesson. Byron Nelson will always be regarded as one of the greatest golfers who ever lived and part of the rich history of the sport in Dallas-Fort Worth. Born near Waxahachie, he became known for once winning 11 consecutive PGA tournaments in 1945. In 18 of the 30 tournaments he played in that year, both still records to this day. That along with his five major tournament championships earned him the name Lord Byron. In 1968, Nelson lent his name to the Byron Nelson Golf Classic in Dallas, the first regularly held PGA Tour event to be named for a pro golfer, and it's been known as the Nelson ever since. In September 2006, Byron Nelson passed away in Roanoke, Texas at the age of 94. The iconic statue of Lord Byron still sits at the TPC Four Seasons in Las Colinas, even though the tournament's home has moved to two different locations since. Trinity Forest Golf Club in Dallas, and now at TPC Craig Ranch in McKinney. His widow says that's not all that keeps his legacy alive to this day. He just was so humble about himself and about, he never understood why anybody one day have his autograph. He never really got that, you know. He said, well, that was 50 years ago when I did all the golf, you know, and so I don't, he never felt like he was a celebrity or he was just really, really funny to be with and to lo live with and just so kind and gentle always. The TPC Craig Ranch Golf Course in McKinney first opened in 2004. For the second straight year, it played host to the AT&T Byron Nelson. The man behind the plan took it all in with extreme pride and joy. TPC Craig Ranch in McKinney will be the pulse of DFW. Just think, Craig Ranch had to be named after someone. Meet David Craig. King David, as some have come to know him in the golf world, is the developer of the entire Craig Ranch community, which currently sits at almost 2,500 acres, a plan that goes back to 2000, when David first purchased some land, when McKinney wasn't the McKinney we know today. One lane east and one lane west. No Sam Rayburn toll road. Uh, took us about an hour and 20 minutes to get to DFW. That was then. This is now. Craig admits he drives around the entire community at least twice a day, which also includes housing the 25,000 residents, office and retail space with massive expansion on the way, including a Bob's Chop House, Me Casina, and a 13-story Marriott. And that will be the entrance to the hotel. And it has two wings. Not the only thing that has Craig flying high. The added structures and hospitality around the course will seat 18,000. Estimated attendance will be over 30,000 each day. A lot of people uh, played roles in making that happen uh, and making a dream come true for me. And it promises to be a dream come true for anyone who makes it to the ultimate hot spot, the par 3 17th hole. With David saying the economic impact to the city of McKinney could be around $50 million, a vision that started 22 years ago will produce a victorious moment for more than a single golfer. You can't put a price on that. So we're all winners. David Craig wants to make it clear that he's not the only one responsible for the growth and development of Craig Ranch. A lot of people's hard work has paid off. What a difference a year makes for TPC Craig Ranch course designer Tom Weiskopf and wife Lori. Having a chance to see it host the AT&T Byron Nelson in person, as opposed to last year when they were forced to watch the tournament from their home in Montana. I saw guys this week that I haven't seen in 20, 30, 40 years, you know, when I played out here on tour. Weiskopf was one of the best in the sport as a player. One major title and five runner-up finishes in majors. But his major passion post-career became designing golf courses, now around 80 to his name, including TPC Craig Ranch. 
where it was his friendship with course and community developer David Craig that turned blueprints nearly 20 years ago into what you see today. Tom is a master, not just a golf course architect, he is a master. Tom isn't just a master of laying out the course in McKinney, he's a master of perseverance, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer last year. It's a tough, tough cancer to overcome, that's for sure. I still have some work left to do in the future, some more chemo and things like that, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But without that support, you know, from people that you don't even know, you know, it's so meaningful. Even more meaningful is the support from someone he does know. When David got the news of Tom's diagnosis, he called upon the guys in the red pants, the Salesmanship Club of Dallas, to use their connections to get Wisecough a consultation and eventually treatment at world-renowned MD Anderson in Houston. They rallied, and I, I'm so grateful to them for that. Um, and I'm grateful that my, my dear friend is here with me this morning. I wouldn't be here today, to tell you the truth. Had I not gone through the Whipple surgery and all the chemo and radiation, I wouldn't be here today, really, if it wasn't for David. As evidenced by one of the main roads leading to the course named Wisecough Avenue, Tom's impact and imprint will be forever lasting here and in the heart of his buddy. It, it I get a little emotional when I'm thinking about it, uh, but you have to take action and find out how you can help, um, not be pushy, uh, because he can be hard-headed sometimes, um, but just be there. And, uh, and, and I'm blessed and fortunate that I could be there. It goes back to one thing. The easiest thing in the world to do is to give up. You know, you got to keep going, pushing forward day by day, day by day, no matter how bad you feel. And just believe that at the end of the day, you're going to get through this. And that's a champion attitude. Tom Weiskopf, he says he's honored that the avenue leading to the course is named after him. On hole 17, there's also a section known as the Weiskopf Suites. Peggy Nelson Jaros has also been as synonymous with the tournament as the man she was once married to. We sat down to discuss her past, present, and future. Byron Nelson will never be forgotten, as evidenced by this being the 54th tournament held in his name. And even though it's been almost 16 years since he passed, his iconic image will never fade, and no one knows better than his widow, Peggy. And wherever you saw Byron, you saw Peggy. It was just that simple. Byron was so much a part of the tournament himself, and he was always doing interviews and things like that. So I thought, well, I need to do something too, and I want to. And so I got to do all kinds of things, walking score and just all kinds of volunteer stuff. And my favorite thing was always packing the volunteer lunches because it was so, so much fun. It was fun to see the man known as Lord Byron, the man Peggy knew as her best friend, paved the way for some of the greatest golfers to follow in his footsteps, Golfers who greatly admired her husband, even though Nelson was never one to seek out praise. He appreciated the fact that people used his example to follow and to inspire their lives and what they did with their lives and their careers, and that made him happy. Through Peggy, Byron's influence is felt to this day. She's always a part of the opening and closing ceremonies for the tournament. Someone the current stars of the game treat with reverence and respect. And I love seeing the guys on the first tee, and of course, always wonderful to see the winners at, on 18. It's just fun to be part of it, and when I can contribute just a little bit and honor Byron at the same time, it's just great pleasure for me. And while Peggy will always uphold Byron's legacy, her last name is now Nelson Jarris. She's remarried to Joe, her former high school classmate from Toledo, Ohio. The next phase of her life can be described simply. Being happy, loving the Lord, loving Joe, and just enjoying life together. We do jigsaw puzzles a lot. <laughs> we love jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> Country music, you gotta have it. <laughs> Saying it was fate that brought her and Joe together, Peggy's gotta believe that Byron Nelson is up there smiling, happy that she's happy.
It just happened. It's the Lord intervened and said, yeah, you need you need to do this. Although I kind of think Byron might have had something to do with this. You know, it's like, she still needs some help, you know. <laughs> Peggy says her and Joe came together when Joe wrote a letter with a similar message to the one in their high school yearbook and said he was coming to Dallas to visit family. They had lunch and were married in three months. Speaking of a great marriage, the charity that receives all the proceeds from the AT&T Byron Nelson, the Momentous Institute in Dallas. As Brooke Cat shows us, it's a school dedicated to changing the lives of children and families in the community. Nestled in the Oak Cliff neighborhood, a unique school that goes beyond the ABCs. Here in the school, they learned a lot of helping the community. Um, tiny things like recycling, uh, being mindful, kind, thoughtful. The Momentous Institute not only teaches the basics to students, but also coping skills with a focus on social and emotional health. I grew up in the area and I always knew that this school was a good school. Um, I was not fortunate enough to attend the Momentous Institute, but I knew that when my, I had my kids that they had to be part of this school. Erica Segura's seven-year-old is a student right now. Her 13 and 16-year-olds also went to Momentous. All of them now thriving. Each year, the Momentous Institute helps more than 5,500 families. It serves kids from three years old up through fifth grade. The priority, at-risk youth. We know that poverty adversely affects um, long-term learning and success, and so it makes it a little bit harder. But when we wrap around our students um, and our caregivers in a strength-based way, um, really, um, the sky's the limit, right? And everyone can reach their full potential. Kelly Richmond with the Momentous Institute says there's never been a more important time for the work they do. Mental health in the spotlight as the pandemic has taken a toll on families. The reality is now, right? We've been through collective trauma the past two years. And if we're not intentionally tending to the mental health needs, we're really missing the mark to ensure that our kids are okay, that our educators are okay, and our families are okay and able to support our students through this difficult time. Uh, the relationship between the kids and the Momentous Institute doesn't end when they leave. This is their scholarship wall. In fact, they even have a program through the Salesmanship Club of Dallas that's provided more than 1.5 million in college scholarships to 210 students since 2005. For Segura's family, it's been a life-changing experience. What do they say about having gone here? Like, do they tell you that? Do they express to you like what they've learned here serves them outside? Tremendously, they do, especially right now during test times. Like right now they're going through star testing. So it helps them to not get stressed and stop and breathe and think like it's gonna be okay. You know, just take a deep breath, take a two, three minutes and you know, they move forward. A holistic approach to learning with impacts well beyond the classroom. 95% of the kids who attend Momentous graduate high school on time and 85% enroll in higher education. From the charity that does so much to improve the lives of children to the men who do so much to support the Momentous Institute. They're known as the Red Pants. And after spending any time around the AT&T Byron Nelson, it's easy to see why. Their fashion, it's catchy. All tournaments, uh, they wear those red pants. The official name of these men in the men's group, the pillars in the community, are the Salesmanship Club of Dallas. They have distinguished careers in the business world, long associated with the Byron Nelson Tournament. You know, their job collectively is to help raise money for the Momentous Institute, but helping to do it at the tournament isn't the only thing they accomplish in their mission. The normal reaction is, why are you wearing those pants? And then our fans, our patrons, they very quickly understand that we are the ambassadors for the AT&T Byron Nelson. And so it's, uh, you know, as we continue to spread our awareness and our brand of, it's just not one week running a golf tournament. This group of individuals called the Salesmanship Club of Dallas comes together every Thursday of the year, every week. And we come together 
and again, stay anchored to our mission, which is the kids and families that we support. We're building off a wonderful 2021, right, which was a pandemic impacted golf tournament where we had about half crowds uh, out here. So we're building off that, continuing that momentum here into 22, and we're gonna continue it into 23 and, and beyond. How do those red pants wear? <laughs> well, I will tell you, with the sun coming out and it being a low 90s right now, it's a little warm. Uh, but the good news is, is we are going to have great weather this week for the golf tournament. Uh, it will be warm, but it's going to be great. The fans are going to come out, and uh, we're really, real excited. I'm going to find some red pants. You, you give they us a, you give us a call. <laughs> Just make sure they have holes in them because it is a little warm right now. So. The guys in the red pants have a wonderful legacy and will always be part of the fabric of this tournament. By the way, one of the members of the Salesmanship Club is Leroy Jordan, the former Cowboys linebacker in the Ring of Honor, part of the Cowboys' first Super Bowl title winning team. Thanks for watching this Byron Nelson special. I'm Keith Russell for CBS News, Dallas-Fort Worth.